Oh, it gives me like a, a, a couple of minutes to figure out. That's how it looks like last time. Yeah. It was just the dirt. I thought it was there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We got a three out photo. Oh, he got the oh, first. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 And you got a different color or not? After it starts running, they start to put their photo. Mine's good. I don't think it's, it's a color dot. straight on it. Oh. We'll see. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yours. Well, that <laughs> yeah. is. Yeah. 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 Of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do you have the roll? Uh, yes, sir. And the on to approval of the evening's agenda. Second. Motion is second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none passes. So. Next. All items under the consent agenda will be passed with one council motion unless. Someone has something they would like to remove and discuss it visually. I have a motion to approve the consent. Motion to consent. And second. And second. Is there any discussion on this? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Say none. Passes. Item number four. Truth and taxation hearing. We need a motion to close the regular meeting and open taxation hearing. Make a motion to close the regular meeting and open up. 2021 to the taxation public hearing. Motion. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None passes. And at this point, I will turn it over to you, Christina, for a presentation and report. For those of you that are here in the public, there are copies of the Truth and Taxation Public presentation on the desk when you signed in. Um, I'll go through the report that I've presented to the council in your packet, um, at which point afterwards, um, I will take questions on regards to the packet from either the council or the public. Sorry, I should have spit that out. Sorry. Okay. 
great. Uh, the purpose of the Truth in Taxation is to discuss the proposed property tax levy for the taxable payable year 2022 and the proposed budget for the year 2022. This public hearing is held to discuss and seek public comment on the city's 21 general fund budget and the 22 property tax levy. The city of Black Truck must certify its final payable 22 property tax levy to the county auditor no later than December 28th of this year. The following pages document um, these items. The city of Black Duck's 22 levy, uh, LGA payment from the state of Minnesota that was certified in July, tax base for the city, and the general fund expenditures and revenue sources for 22. The general fund budget for 22 does not balance. It will need to increase in the property tax levy. However, after careful consideration review of the FAQs from the United States Treasury, it has been determined that the 21 American Rescue Act funds awarded to the city of Black Duck may be eligible to utilize may be eligible to rehire police officers to pre-pandemic levels. Therefore, the city of Black Duck will budget 15,000 of the American Rescue Act funds received in 21 to the 22 police department budget and allowable $4,000 for administrative expenses to the administrative budget. This will reduce the preliminary levy that was adopted in September uh, to $341,160 from the proposed $360,160. This um, shows a change over 2021 of a 10% increase versus uh, it was a 17.8% increase before the American Rescue Act funds were allocated. Um, obviously, this doesn't always um, allow a 10% increase to all taxpayers. We have several non-taxable uh, properties inside the city between nonprofits like churches, our government buildings, and our school district properties. Page two of my document reviews the calculation for our LGA that we get from the state. I've noted items one through 11 that are utilized by the state for our calculation in red that may or may not have changed over 2020 and 19 since the census. Near the bottom of the page, you can see that the state has allocated an additional $5,203 to our LGA payment, um, just under a 2% increase over this year. We'll be receiving $283,700. $737 in 2022. Page three outlines the estimated market value history of the city. You can see in the center of the page, the pay 22% over 2020 has actually increased almost 2.3%. So we have a slow increase of market value continuing to increase inside the municipality. Page four outlines the taxable market value of the city. That too has had an increase. Um, typically your taxable market values based um, and your net tax capacity is based on two years prior. A lot of what accounts for this is any growth inside the city, improvements to structures. Um, we didn't have a ton of increased property values in 2020 due to the pandemic. A lot of people didn't put a lot of build, new buildings up, but they did utilize a lot of their care fund, their CARES fundings to improve their own structures. So there was a considerable amount. Um, you can see, as I stated earlier, over 2021, that's a 5% increase for the whole city. Near the bottom of page four, um, I noted, you know, same type of comment I make when it comes to property taxes. Everybody's varies from year to year. Uh, this, this city uses the county assessor's office to evaluate the taxable market values. Um, each year in April, there's an open house that's held here for the city of Black Duck and also Heinz Township. 
and the assessor's office from the county has representatives that attend that. No um, appointments are necessary. You can come in with your tax statement and ask questions to the assessor's office at that time. Um, how your valuation changed and why, and they can help you figure out if there's been any mistakes as well. Uh, page five, I've summarized the general fund expenditures for 2022, noting public safety, and which incorporates fire and police, uh, going to be $332,494. That's 43% of our general fund budget. General government administration is 203,841. That represents 26% of our budget. The streets department, 169,761, which represents 22% of the general fund budget. And then the smaller departments, parks, um, represents the wayside park here in town and that lit up this past Saturday. Our library being part of Kitchigami Regional and then our street lighting. Page six of the report reviews where the funding is going. As you can see, personnel costs, this is wages and liabilities and healthcare make up 51% you know, of our budget between operating and equipment that makes up the other 49%. Near the bottom of this page, I've outlined the increase in expenses of $59,958, little over 38,000 makes up the personnel costs. Additional items that we have agreed to fund next year is to do some major improvements to the library. Uh, the first one, meaning the LED lighting, is going to get improved in that building. The Wayside Rest Park is going to fund some improvements to the restrooms with new fixtures. 2022 is our inspection, our city rental inspections run. We do them every two years. And then I noted again down at the bottom that we'll be taking some of our American Rescue Act funding and uh, offsetting the tax levy for use that because it's allowable. Uh, page seven, I've noted some items that the city has been going to be taking action on in 2022 that they've been working on this year and last year. The Deltown Redevelopment Project on Main Street Investments by the City of Black Duck, the Development Corporation, are going to see improvements to commercial property downtown on Main Street, where three commercial buildings will be demolished and returned for future development in summer of 2022. This investment will allow for a clean 0.21 acres of space, which is an, has an estimated land value of $12,600 to, to house new commercial opportunities. For those of you that haven't followed, the article in the paper that represents the three commercial properties between City Hall and the theater. Construction of the public works and police facility. The City Council will consider in January of 2022 to move forward with the construction of a new public works and police facility after bidding closes. If approved, this facility will house the equipment and staff of both departments and will be located west of the city on Industrial Drive. Expenses for the construction bond will be funded partially by property taxes and utility revenue. The property taxes will not increase to the property owners for this new debt as current debt sunsets in 2024 that will take up 70% of the payment. Existing property utilized for departments will be sold and then returned to the tax roll that has right now an estimated market value for commercial property of $138,000. Newly remodeled and expanded Black Duck Liquor Store. As most folks have known in town, the addition and the remodel to the pond will provide for a larger sales volume for business, providing the city of Black Duck the opportunity to reduce future property taxes to taxpayers. Currently, the liquor store transfers net revenues to the general fund $65,000 annually. 
the golf course fund ten thousand dollars annually and our lakeview cemetery of two thousand five hundred dollars this amount may increase in the coming years based on net revenues from the liquor store as the off sale grows <clears throat> Black Duck Golf Course and Pine Tree Park. The city of Black Duck has made major improvements in the past few years on the recreational amenities it provides to the community. Improving equipment for the golf course by investing in new golf carts, constructing a new cart shed, and irrigation system improvements have just been a few. The local campground, Pine Tree Park, continues to add and improve on amenities as the need for camping continues to grow. In 2020, Black Duck Beach was open to the public and a new restroom facility was added in 2021, all from the support of the community through donations. Pine Tree Park made exterior improvements to the restroom and shower building and finished the interior improvements this fall through the support of camping revenue and the annual Beltrani County Grant. So what's next? Black Duck is going to be working on a new marketing campaign. They'll partner with the Chamber of Commerce and the Development Corps and the school district to fund and launch a new marketing campaign to promote the community. The marketing campaign will focus on what the area has to offer, new people to locate to the area, and businesses to build and offer services to community. This campaign will offer a newly improved website, social media, and radio advertising. A limited DMV. The City of Black Tech has petitioned the Minnesota Department of Public Safety to provide the services of a limited DMV inside Black Tech City Hall. If approved, the staff will provide to the community and surrounding residents and visitors the ability to title transfers, motor vehicles, and the benefit of purchasing motor vehicle tabs. This service will generate revenue to the general fund and serve a large regional area. The city will receive formal notification early in 2022. The City of Black Duck sales tax. In 2022, the voters of the City of Black Duck will have the opportunity to vote on passing a half percent city sales tax. The revenue the sales tax will generate will go directly to improving city streets, utility lines, walking path, parks, and much more. So please watch more in the future. Uh, it will hopefully show up on the referendum as a referendum in the fall 22 election. Pages eight through 12 outline the details of the general fund expenditures by department. I can go through those if people have individual questions, but I'd like to forward everybody to page 13, which outlines the general fund revenue sources. I've outlined the major revenue resources um, with LGA, of course, being the top at 283737 The property taxes at 275000 That's a typo. It is, should be 256000 My apologies. You go through a 14 page document a bunch of times and you can still miss them. Um, our fire protection contribution, which comes from um, the 11 areas that our fire department support, uh, comes in at $83,655. Our liquor store transfer that's budgeted for $65,000 for next year. The police and state fire aids of $35,500. And then miscellaneous charges for services and fines and forfeits pick up the rest. The last page of the document outlines those I just stated earlier, but in more detail. That concludes my report, Max. Um, if there are specific questions to the report, I will do my best to field them. I got a question. And here it says property tax is 10.3%. My tax is about 21%. That's your total tax or your city tax? City tax, 21%. Since 2019 to now, went up 67%. Okay. And your question is? Why did you say 10.3? That's over last year. That's a general percentage. 
of what the property taxes, of what the levy is over this right here. That's just a calculation based on well, that. Probably a kickoff who gets to pay the most. <laughs> like I stated on that other page, that's based on your market value and your estimated market value. And the assessor's office can outline that in detail for you. I can't report in detail for each property as to which is going to go up and how that's going to go My up. house is valued at $95,000. According to this $100,000 house is $700. I'm paying over $1,200. I'm paying $400. On a $95,000 house. And that's just a general estimate. I can't speak specific to your property. I'm sorry. If that is your question, why your property taxes went up to that extent, that I can't, I am not the, I'm not the assessor of cars. I can't answer that specific question. All I can do is report on what the budget is oh, and how it all comes into play with the entire oh, budget. Brachio. Go, go, go home. Are taxes going to continue to go 20% a year from now on? Well, we didn't increase the levy last year. My tax went up double digits last year. Again, yep. the levy went up 0.8% over the year before. Go, 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 go. How it affects go, your individual brachio. property taxes. Go, 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 go is a different calculation. So can you explain the city of Blackfoot calculation and where does that come from? Mm -hmm. Is that the assessor that comes up? It on? is, yes ma'am. Oh, what I can report to yeah. the public is where the budget is, what the percentage calculation is over the existing year. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've reported on this, on this particular mm -hmm. page. But everybody's valuations are different. And that's where the assessor's office comes into play to really be able to answer, like Chris's question. Well, ten percent is obviously not in Chris's favor. It's twenty and some percent. So, so a lot of, I'm very sorry. A lot of what else comes into play, Chris, is they take into your market values and how many houses in your area have sold. So when your property values go up and down, that's due in part partially by what properties are in your area and what they've sold for. Well, I understand that, but a $100,000 house is a $100,000 house. <laughs> right, right. And it's, like I said, it's just an estimate. That's a calculation I received from the assessor's office for a guide. So for, for on our proposed property tax statement for the next year, mm -hmm. it showed a meeting today mm -hmm. at 615 to talk about Back up. Wouldn't it have been helpful to have the assessor here to maybe explain what that? You may is? not have showed up in time, but I had already gone over that okay. each year, the um, assessor's office from the county, because they work, they work on behalf of many townships, including right. our small cities, mm -hmm. as the assessor's department. And each April, they have open houses at various locations throughout the county. Ours is typically about the third Monday in April, and it's posted publicly for residents and property owners to come in and meet with the assessing staff with your property tax statement to find out those detailed questions that you may have. Again, because each property value is slightly different. Does that help? Yeah. Oh, that's here. That's yes, here. it's always here. Yes, Ms. Dean. Mm -hmm. Basically, I pissed off somebody at the time. <laughs> <laughs> they may not even know you personally, so I doubt that. <laughs> I, think feel better, isn't it? I, I know that there's been several homes in town in the last year and a half that have flipped. And I, I understand that that generates a big change for a lot of market values. I live in Heinz Township. And mine changed enormously too. But the value of my house didn't change that much. Did your homestead exclusion go down? No, I don't think so. Okay, that's good. That's good. Because ta ta taxable market value and estimated market value are obviously two different mm -hmm. things. What somebody believes your house will sell, sell for versus what it truly is, is, is valued at truly generates those differences. 
but all of the um, percentages of what you end up paying are based on a calculation the assessor can go through with you on. They have, um, to your point of getting somebody angry at you, it's a calculation that they have to go through specific training at the state in order to make sure that that valuation is, um, abides by the statute. Christina, do you know how often an assessor goes through an area to look at uh, specific homes in an area? I can't speak to the exact time that's, but I do know that Beltrami County um, has reviewed several of the townships in the county in the last three years. Pines Township was done two years ago, and I believe the city was done around the same time, probably 19, maybe late 18. But it takes them an enormous amount of time to go through each specific area because they have to go to each property, evaluate where the properties are. They have to look around. They can't go in your home, but they can see from the outside if you've made any improvements that they don't know about. Um, if you catch them, they might ask you if they you're, they let them in your home. It's up to you if you want to. But on a timing standpoint, I think they've done. Quite a, quite a number of townships in the last five years. Yes. Well, I think a lot of it goes on what you're saying. A lot of it goes on what the house is sold for. Mm -hmm. But it only works on the upside. If the house is sell at a lower price, they don't lower it. No. No, that's unfortunate. No, they don't. Yeah. No. <laughs> and really, yeah, and last year when we did try to keep everything as low as we could with the COVID pandemic and everything else. And we, that was 0.8% was? It was 0.8% over 19. And that's not your yeah, specific increase, Chris, but that percentage that I report is just where the general funds budget is for the total levy over the year prior. So what I report as a percentage of increase doesn't, doesn't reflect on your tax. Again, because of market values. I still think the county's mad at me. <laughs> Does anyone have any other questions about the additional items I've reported on, projects that are going on? Where is the debt service on that addition to the liquor store? The debt service on the liquor store will not be funded by the general fund, by the general fund nor the taxes. Is that it, right? It's going to be funding its own debt. One of the reasons the council agreed to for the project. How much the, more did it cost to build a liquor store this year than it would have next year when prices come down? So we will do. Well, they already have. Yeah, that's difficult to know. We had a we had a budget for what we knew the liquor store could be you know, could cash flow on that debt and the estimates for those bids came below that. So um, that's why the project moved forward. Plus the- You buy a board with what, 10 bucks a piece, not or down to three, so. Hopefully the liquor store is generating revenue today. Right? Yes, it is, it is. And, and that's what we hope. every night when I yes. drive by, it's cool. Yeah. And, yes. and um, Sean and I actually went, you know, and we met um, prior to the project even working or going forward. And, and she can speak to this more in detail. But when other municipalities improve on their off sales, um, it really does cash flow for the cities themselves. Um, the Minnesota State Auditor reports on uh, liquor store financials. The 2020 report just came out a month ago. And there's several, several places inside the state of Minnesota that contribute thousands and thousands of dollars to them. Um, the, the hope and, and the expectation is that the growth of the liquor store will you know, conti continue to increase so those transfers can continue to happen and lower the levy for the, for the taxpayers. Does the fund show a revenue report? I can't hear you. Do they share the revenue report at their meetings here? 
the revenue report, yes, their income statements are always in our council packets every month. But is that something only they see or do? Nope, it's all public. Yep. How much higher was the revenue during COVID than normally is? Uh, please, Shonda. Um, <clears throat> our off sale uh, revenue was up by about 13% when everything was closed down. Um, this year, our, of course, our on sale is a lot higher than 2020 because we haven't been shut down this year. A lot last um, year. Yeah. I said during COVID, the liquor sales in the state of Minnesota went up 40%. Yeah, then that might be true. Um, but during COVID, they were people were not um, encouraged to, to travel. And as we all know, that this uh, galactic area is where people come through to go ice fishing, they come to go camping, they come to go, um, yeah, hunting. All of those items, and then in 2020, they were really discouraged to, you know, encouraged to stay home, stay in their area, respected areas, which so, we all know didn't happen. Well, <laughs> I mean, there was still significant less traffic up here than there would have been. Certainly. So the revenue report is in the packet, right? Yes. It's, How do I see that? It's in the income statement. Right. Um, if you want to go in that big in packet, packet, yeah, it would be in the big packet, Misty. I typically don't print. This? Many of those, but it's on our website. I yep. <clears throat> when it's the 275. I can page. see this on the website. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. All public knowledge. Okay. Yep. Any other directed questions for the truth and taxation report that I may field? Thank you. That's my taxes went up too. So yeah. at this point then if there's no further questions. I would ask for a motion to close the public hearing and reopen the regular meeting. I make a motion to close the 2021 taxation meeting and open the regular meeting. Regular council meeting. Thank you. Do I have a second? A second. A motion and a second. Is there any discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And none passes. So, uh, we will begin. We'll pick up where we left off at the Galactic Forum. There's is there anybody who wants to speak. Yeah, three minutes, according to what we normally do. Want to something else? Okay. Um, reports of committees. Um, we we'll get to public works, Mike, so you can get some sleep. I don't really have a whole lot for you guys. Snow. <laughs> That's it. Well, it's between the 40s next week. Oh, <laughs> I believe it when I see it at this point <laughs> here. Anything for me from any of you? You guys did a good job this weekend. Yeah, good job. yeah thank you. Thanks, we appreciate that. Yeah. I'm not, I really don't have anything. Our stuff has just been getting everything ready for what just came. So yeah. <laughs> that's what we've been focused on. Okay. Okay. And we will move to Shonda. Yeah, I don't have a whole lot. To, we're going to have a little ribbon cutting ceremony um, on the 16th. Just Reopening, um, we have been serving a lot of burgers and um, a lot of beer. Yeah, the weekend was really good. December 15th or 16th? 
Oh, it's the 15th. 15th. It's 15th. the same. It's the Wednesday uh, right after the chamber meeting. Right. So, um, yeah. How much um, do I get a drink before my taxes? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> our, our partners at Cross Anderson are, uh, are doing a, going to do a presentation and they keep really getting it. Uh, we invite the council and staff and public to come. They're actually uh, they're bringing the media because it's a you know it's a big project for them to do so a lot of time and their staff and local staff and do it. So we welcome everybody to come. What time is that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the 15th next Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Is there a like a customer appreciation kind of thing planned for December? Or December, the grand opening? Of okay. Well, we, we had some things going on this last weekend. Um, the grand opening, we did it on the weekend because we wanted everybody able to come. Uh, as far as our customers' wives goes, we did a you know wine tasting. Uh, we had karaoke. We had things going on this weekend. Um, and then this had come up, and we were just they were like, we'd like to do a. A big splash. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, presentation thing. You said you did materials. Yeah. This weekend or last? This last week. Okay. Good. Good. You're doing really well. Good turnout. It wasn't, you know, TV rated singing, but people really <laughs> enjoyed it. Okay. Yeah. So that means we. It that wasn't the we voice. Could, we could compete. All right. Absolutely. You mean there was prizes? No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, he wants to compete. Well, <laughs> trust me, you, you don't want that. Okay. No. So, are you going to have anything on Wednesday when you have the fair mm -hmm. Really, not really. Just okay. it's sure. just a you know here you are. We're open and. Uh, anything else for Shonda? Burgers are awesome. Yeah. Uh, do we have anything from Rob, our police interim police chief? Uh, the folks, no? the uh, law enforcement um, interview panel interviewed five candidates Thursday prior to Christmas or Thanksgiving, excuse me. Um, and uh, we are back on the two, the top two candidates right now. So I, I hope. If the uh, investigator is not too overwhelmed because he also works for Beltran County, um, also in the Mitchell TV, which is also hiring a member of uh, law enforcement. I hope by January we'll have that narrowed down for the council. Okay. 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 Is there a job going on now? We have a part time officer at this point, Chris. But the, the plan is to be restaffed. Anything from the uh, fire department? Uh, no, I do apologize. Ryan from the agenda, but I do not. And the golf course. <laughs> uh, the golf board just recently met and interviewed two candidates for the new golf director position. Um, we'll be conducting second interviews on the 16th and we should have something to report to the council. Okay. I will ask you, Lori, if there's anything from the library. There's nothing from the library except for what we talked about is um, with our last meeting, uh, the funds that were coming our way um, for library improvement. Nothing. Did you meet with the, with the library board about that? No, because our meeting was just two days prior to the other one. Oh, it was? Okay. Yep. Okay. So I was one on Tuesday and another one on Thursday. So, okay. Um, but Kelly's aware that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, there was a Kelly applied for that uh, the touchstone energy. Yes. The grants that were a, yeah. 
think they were awarded that. Actually. They were awarded the grant, yes. And what was that for? Um, was it was a source of excellence. Um, you didn't need to push on the spot. That's all right. That's strong. It's like my first meeting now or so. Hey. Well, no, <laughs> Yep. I was just happy I got to put these back up my Oh. I was just like, check this out. Nick was going to him, and it would never answer him. Oh, I knew it was on the very end. Yeah. 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 Make a comment on that overspending on that overspent fund. So we're going to get that. Yep. The council probably needs to work really close with the library board, but we need to start formulating a really good plan to utilize that sixty-three, like sixty-three thousand dollars. Lori, is that correct? So that we're utilizing it correctly. The council needs to consider how we're going to do that and what way we're going to move forward. Whether it's going to you're going to take a side committee to start planning that. I would recommend maybe a, a portion of the library board and a portion of the council to start working on something because Kitch County is not going to release those funds until we have a definite plan on how to utilize them. Right. And you don't have to get them all at one time. You can get them in intervals. But well, the building needs serious improvements. Right, you know, if the council just is going to approve to increase the lighting next year, but with the amount of improvements we could do to the building as a whole. So, go ahead, go ahead. The number is 65,683. Okay. Well, let's hope it's more than that, Nick. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, like, Mike and Pac, like, the front ramp needs to really be redone. Both doors need and to be changed. And the doors. Yeah, both done. doors need to be changed. The entrances to those doors need to be changed. The bathroom needs to be changed. The bathrooms need improvement. The carpet needs to be ripped out. The lighting needs changing. It needs a paint job. Okay, so. Uh, I mean, and those are just things that I can recognize, and I know Mike has recognized, but I would encourage the council to get a small committee together to start rolling on where you're going to spend this money. Well, is that something you want to bring to that next meeting? Yes. But you can set up a committee with a couple of their members and a couple of our members. Do you have a preference on how many people you want in this committee? You know, the planning, two, the planning committee. Three. Yeah, I would say two from each side would be beneficial. So when we did the the plans for the liquor store and the public works police facility, we had maybe four people plus somebody that was an expert in, you know, we had Steve Rose, which we don't really need to do. But we do need to, you know, have a mix of what they believe needs to be done and what we can observe. Do you want two from the city council and two from the library? Uh, whether it's council, a mix of council and staff, Lori, I would advise. This would be something that so that we can, if we can get a plan made this winter, we yeah. can Correct. get something going this spring. Right, because then we can get estimates and bids. Um, whether some of that ends up being labor. And if they need you to go sit in on this one, too, or out, you have to do that. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Unless you have another call here, perhaps, but no one's doing it. No, I would say nobody else, but I would. Okay. 
Or if you want another person, it doesn't sound like you're going to have a shortage yeah. at all. So, all right. it's, it's way to go, team. We'll just yeah. bring it to them and we'll go from there. Yeah. Okay. All right. We go. are going to move down to uh, item seven, which is Steve. And me. I know. It's like oh, it does say I really Christina Regas. It does say Christina Regas there. Yeah. Misty and Ben. Misty's been in it neck deep more than I have. I just provided you guys the pictures of the paper. <laughs> All right. I didn't that. <laughs> you want so this? The restroom is done. Um, for the most part, we have. I talked to Mike. He's got a few little things to help us out with that we need a seat for the toilet. And. Uh, we need a little, we have a pump. Yeah, just some little pilly things, no big deal. Um, I'm looking for a restroom sign to put on the door or something to it's cute. Um, and then we're on to the next thing, and I think you kind of have a detail on that, but a little bit. Yeah. yeah. We're looking to start the pavilion after this now. So we're going to start looking at funding again and donations and anything and everything we can do to scrape up enough money. To Build a pavilion within this group again. Yeah, yeah. we're hoping to meet this winter yet. Um, Misty's, you know, been able to get material estimates from the lumber yard already on the plan for the pavilion based on what our group um, envisioned uh, this past summer. Um, we still need some estimates on the labor. Um, the gentleman that did the restroom has agreed to do a labor to do it again for the pavilion. And I thought he did a marvelous job. I think this is so super cute. You know, just the heart that Brian put in it is just echoes the whole the whole project itself. So um, we know how big we want that pavilion, um, and we're really hoping we can knock that one out of our to do list and be done. So you can have it completely after that project is done. But it should be, um, we envision an open sided pavilion with enough room to put six picnic tables, the tables that the school made for us last summer underneath with a cement pad. Um, and hopefully have enough, you know, a little extra room where we'll have some sod in that area and some boulders so that it'll. Make a definition between a parking area and, and that usable space when we're all done. Would that be a little bit bigger than the wayside pavilion or what we're saying? Well, that wayside is not good comparison. Yeah, that one's 24 like, by 24. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Six tables, it'll fit. We don't have close to the same size as the ones that are in Pine Tree Park. Yeah, the campground ones. Perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah, we did receive um, another roundup grant this fall from Delta County Electric. Um, that'll help keep that funding going. And um, we have a, a private party that wants to donate to the next phase as well. We need to get our estimates done before we step over that. One step closer. Mm -hmm. Um, we were talking, um, right, was that Friday? Yeah. We were talking Friday, I don't know, from, um, Wayside, um, we were talking about sand. Sand. Mm -hmm. Some of the beach holds up with the drought. Mm -hmm. With the wind, you know, the wind blew all the sand up the hill. <laughs> and they were talking that, um, barn, or barn sand? They said that on farms, you guys, there's a lot of sand on farms. That's on my farm. Well, okay. That's it. <laughs> but, but, like, there's, a, and they said it's like softer, more, a lot better sand. Than beach sand? Yeah. Well, maybe Minnesota beach sand, but that's a lot different than other beach sand. Water. Is this well, is this like something sense, super and it doesn't erode? Is that yeah. the reason for the conversation? Well, yeah. Boy, I don't know. I mean, our winters are and that ice on that lake is it's it moves boulders. Yeah, it, it so, I, so if it moves rock, it can move well, sand. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I've heard of that. Again, every well, year, obviously, every year building. 
when when the project was started, we knew that when the city had this completely in this this work was I'm done. Not a sand expert. There was, was going to be if there's, you know, there was going to be beach sand brought in every year. <laughs> there's just I mean unless we do a full retaining wall like Benjamin has and. And I know that they bring in sand and, and we evaluate that too. That's just never going to stop. Mm -hmm. It's going to come in as it'll go be off. interesting. We only had one winter, and that one was it was kind of it was a little rough start. We were kind of starting to question things, but we went down as a group and we picked all like a lot of the roots mm -hmm. and rocks and we cleaned it all and shoved it away. And I mean, with their equipment too. Just a little bit of sand. I mean, it really just popped right out of it. Yeah. And so it'll be interesting to see one more winter to see what happens. You know, it's almost kind of I gotta wait and see what does. Yeah. I mean, I think it turned out all right. And we were a little worried in the beginning, but I think it turned out. I think it still turned out all right. And I think the public didn't even give it a second thought when they when they we went to the beach. We used they used it. Yeah. We, used we were it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I mean, there's a couple of, like you know it dropped down a little bit yeah. to the spots, but I, I just don't. I think I think we have to start over. We did talk about that. We did. We talked about building the wall and then having an opening, and then we started looking at the money towards that. And it was like uh, uh, we didn't really want to have to redo the whole entire thing. So I think no matter where you go in Minnesota, where there's a beach, there's always going to be constant every year. Yeah, and hopefully just, it never. I mean, hopefully it doesn't have a winter where it's so wiped out that it's a huge burden for. You know, I mean, hopefully that doesn't happen, yeah. but you just never know what you're going to get. It usually takes more than a year or two to establish. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. We're winging it. Yeah. We're just, and if we have to, worst case scenario, it all falls apart and you know, the city's overwhelmed. I mean, maybe a few of us will hammer yeah. back together and try and do something again where we can get funds again. Or, you know, I mean, yeah. there's always a way. Trying to rework it again. The sand issue is like a two hundred and fifty dollar and thirty minutes of my time issue. Yeah. It's really yeah. not an issue. Excellent. Good attitude. Good attitude. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. Anything else, Chris? No. Other than they should get a hold of you if they would like to make a donation. Absolutely. Yeah. Me or Christina really. It's actually kind of come down now. Maybe kind of fell apart. Everything. Um. So it really has come down to you and I and Nate Land. I would say it would be the three standing people right. really still pushing and trying to get it done. So yeah. and we're doing it. I'm fully confident and I don't feel like we need any more help because sometimes that just slows things down too. Yep. So I think we're doing good. Yep. And back to the whole library committee thing. Less mm -hmm. is easier to work with sometimes. Pretty good. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Administrator's report. I have a couple of resolutions that need approval tonight, Max. Um, the first one is acknowledging and identifying donations from the development forum and the chamber to help with the website redevelopment. Um, as you may remember from previous work sessions, um, the development core has provided $3,000 to the redevelopment of the city website and the chamber um, donated a thousand dollars to do so because they have requested specific locations for this funding to go. Um, this needs to be acknowledged. Pardon me? I need a vote on this, please. I'll approve resolution 2021-30. Resolution acknowledging the donation. I have a motion. I have a second. I have a second. Is there any discussion on it? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, passes. Um, resolution 31 is designating the polling places for 2022 for the municipal and other elections that will be held in the upcoming year. <laughs> A motion to approve resolution 2021-31. Resolution. A motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? No. 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None passed. And then uh, resolution 32 maxes on uh, resolution approving the final 2021 tax levy collectible in 2022 based on the given uh, taxation of the hearing report I provided earlier tonight. I have a motion to approve. Motion to approve 2021-32 resolution approving final 2020 tax levy collectible in 2022. No second. Motion and a second. <laughs> any further, any discussion on the tax levy? I would request a roll call vote. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, Lori? Yes. Councilor Hamilton. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Councilor Johnson. Hi. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Councilor Hewitt. Hi. Councilor Seitz. Hi. What was that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Mayor Goulette. Aye. There you go. We have a approval. Yes. Four five zero. Okay. Resolution two thousand twenty one thirty three. Is the resolution adopting a schedule of these charges and various licenses um, for the city of Black Duck for 2022? I know in the work session I said you didn't need to do this until January. And, uh, and the reason for that is because I needed to notify all the utility customers of the upcoming increase, even though it doesn't affect their bill that's due until March 1, because we're always a month behind. But I need to send letters out to everybody after this meeting is done, since they're notified of that um, volume increase. So that's noted in this resolution on page. Uh, right, on page two, items 32 and 33. Are you making that motion or are you asking for it? I'm asking for one. Okay. Motion to approve resolution 2021 20, 33. Second. 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 A motion and a second. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Pass it. Kurt, you're up. Hey. <laughs> I'm just no see. Uh, <laughs> up to give you a, a kind of a quick update. I was here uh, late summer and called talking about the application uh, for the sales tax. That'll go in the end of January, within a bunch of months of that. So, that last week again up here, we fine tuned the project list. Um, we talked about grouping some of these projects in the larger list that will be presented. Um, we talked a little bit about uh, making a regional significant argument in that application. So we talked about different angles uh, of that narrative that we need to do. Um, and through our discussions, one of the things that we need to include in that application is the half cent sales tax that was done last time. The assumption is that we're going to have sort of um, over a 20-year period. That's also an assumption. Um, as part of that assumption, that you also have to state it um, as best as we can tell. 20 years or until you reach this certain threshold of money. So for example, if we say $10 million, if you reach that before you get to 20 years, the sales tax ends then. So it's the 20 year it expires or when you reach that uh, amount. Um, Christina has some information that's a couple of years old on sales tax um, that shows an anticipated revenue um, around 40,000. Using 2018. Yeah. That was the that was the earliest the Department of Revenue could provide to me when I asked for it, and that was back in 
No, it was, it was 2020, I think I asked for it. Yeah. Um, over the last couple of years, um, some of that has changed in how people purchase things. The online sales have increased partly because of COVID and it's not necessarily gone away completely. And that can drive more sales tax for a community. Um, for example, if someone was going to drive down to Target and buy something and instead now they learned how to do it online over COVID and now it's just easy for them to order it online through Amazon. Um, not sure how many years it's been though, but now the state captures those sales and they go to the point of sale. So um, the city actually could collect sales tax associated with online order. We don't have a good way of capturing how that's changed. International Falls is a good example that their market study shows 850,000 approximately people participate each year for sales tax. Um, their Kmart closed. There was some real concern was that a realistic number? COVID came, everyone started ordering online instead of driving to Duluth, and all of a sudden they're pulling in 1.2. So um, some of that's going to disappear again if people go back to their, their normal ways. But we were trying to discuss what we want is a number that's realistic, yet you know, we don't want to cut ourselves short and all of a sudden it expires after 16 years. Um, so that 40,000 doesn't probably feel realistic. And so we were throwing around using 50,000 as that cap. So an increase of over 10%, but probably justified. It's a few years old, plus buying habits have changed. So um, 50,000, that would be a million dollars over the 20 year cycle. So um, that sales tax, if enacted, would last for 20 years or until the CDA collects $25 million. So, um, but we wanted to run that by you before we include that application if that's in the Ideally, it's put a huge number on that so you knew you'd never expired out in those 20 years. It's got to be realistic with that. Can they kind of turn around and bite you too? People aren't understanding. If you're asking for too much. Or yeah. yeah. So it really feels like 50 is a reasonable number to you. And we have information from 2018 at 40,000 a year. So. Mm -hmm. Are we looking for a, a motion on this one? To, uh, we don't need a formal motion. Because you're going to approve the application here. And get there. Yep. I got gotcha. you. Yep. So, but we don't, we want to, as we put these narratives together, we want to make sure that everyone's kind of comfortable that they're actually okay. And just, just to clarify, that's a half percent on anything that we've got. Can I ask a question? Of course, I'm right. That's fine. No. How do you regulate? And this is foreign to me, so I'm going to ask some dumb questions. So, how do you like? If I buy something on Amazon, how far away like is it your zip code, or how does that work? I think it's your zip code. Um, it hasn't been enacted that way that long. There was some lawsuits back. Mm -hmm. so the is actually years. pretty recent, but the you know states wanted to start capturing the sales taxes who were occurring outside. So the state wants that money. You're buying stuff in California, but the city could ride in on their coattails because they would have a half cent riding on that. I would bet that one of your concerns, Ms. D, is you're not in the city, right? You're in Langer, and that that would still purchases should not affect should not get that one percent. I would assume they have a way of taking addresses from. The I think they're going to have to, and dramatically because our zip code goes all the way down to Scenic. Pennington and all the way out to, to Squaw Lake. Is that what it is? So is your zip code? Or, I mean, That's that, a, it's got to be your address. It's got to be your address. Okay. They, they need to know where the um. That's where the kind of yeah, mind -boggling where mean. the benefit where your address is and how they can know. Zip code works for the state or if they're a new city one that's happening in other cities, so it must already right down to the address. Yeah. And this money that you get through the taxes is going specifically towards. We're creating a um, a document that outlines what these projects, what this kind of funding, what these funding will go towards. And when we originally did it in the 2018 <laughs> election that got voted down, it was just for infrastructure and streets. And now they want, um, in order to, for it to pass at the legislature, 
you need to show regional significance. So what the city has agreed to is to incorporate other um, projects that need funding too, things that support our parks and recreation, our trail, our campground, our golf course, our parks. So if you did this pass in the city, mm -hmm. how would you as a city delegate where it goes to them? Um, when there's projects that are being funded, that's where that money would go to pay to that debt. Okay, so let's say we're going to redo the water and sewer line in Liberty Drive. And, and but let's say you had like three things going on. Yep. Like, so you just pick and choose, like what? It would have to go by percentage. And I know there's a statute that delineates how much can go where, depending upon how big that project is. And um, that would be at, at the council's discretion? It, there's some of that, yes. And it would also... It would also, and I'm not 100% on this, but I would also gauge that a good portion of it has to be, if this is a water and sewer project, that part of your utility revenues would have to help fund some of that debt too. It wouldn't just be all the sales tax revenue that would fund that debt completely. Does that help? Yeah. And the end of the project specifically has to be written in that request book. Like right. So if we forget about a project, who we might use it on that and then end up in that application. Mm -hmm. okay. So when you write the application, you have to write Yes. Yep. Yeah. 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 And that's what we've been working on this last year. document's pretty long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When, when it did not pass as a referendum vote in 2018, in that year back then, if the voters approved it, then it went to the legislature to approve. But in 2019, they changed the way that works statutorily, where the city still has to pass a resolution, but the legislature gets the vote first. And if they don't pass it, then it doesn't go to the voters. Now, so it's completely the opposite now. So now beyond our voter registration here. In, in this coming fall, if, the, if our state legislators approve it this coming spring. And I just spoke with Matt Grossel on Saturday. He's aware of the project. So you still write the application of even though it hasn't passed? Yeah, we have to show um, what we've done by hiring Woodseth is they created a campaign campaign for International Falls because they were in the yeah. same boat yeah. Yeah. where the voters didn't really understand what this was for. They only saw the debt and could increase their property taxes because that's basically how you're, as a city, you're getting that debt. And um, it didn't really pass. It didn't make pass in 18 because people just saw, oh, you're going to raise my taxes. Well, they're assuming a percentage increase is a property tax increase, not a sales tax increase. So it didn't pass. And what I Falls did was they created this nice public campaign that they could give to the voters so that they were aware of what's coming down the pipe when the election comes. And that's, that's what we're doing. Layout, yep. the needs that the city needs to do so that people understand what they want to sell it. Yes. Yep. You like the city of Bemidji, they put a half of sales tax on a few years ago back, and it's coming up. I think it's they're having their meeting tonight, and if they used all their money for the city park, mm -hmm. and they were talking about it on the radio today. And uh, one of the call tours was talking about it down there. I think it's coming to fruition today. Okay. This right now, and they have to decide what they can do with the money now because the parks are almost all done. Oh, so they're coming to the end of their projects, yes. and now they have to consider what if they're going to make it allow so, it to continue yes. or not. Yeah. So just one more question: So the, this is this something that already passed through each one of the council members that voted already yes to it? Because they could still vote no on their ballots. So necessarily, not everybody at this table. Is already saying yes to it? Um, no, it's a little different. Um, what the council will vote on in January so that the request of the state can get approved on and considered has to be to the state by January 31st. So in the January 22 regular council meeting, they will vote to approve a resolution to move forward with this action. Okay. And then that action will go to the state legislators consider approval at that point if it gets approved then it comes back to the voters of okay. my time 
they could prove adherence to the vote no on that. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. Correct. At which point, let's assume it does pass in November of 22, it wouldn't actually start until second quarter of 23. Interesting. So yeah, fifty thousand dollars. I think is realistic. Good chunk of change to help out. Okay, we're good. <clears throat> I think that's all I wanted to get on board with that. So we're going to continue on fine tuning those narratives and stuff. So um, Christina said that no one was really excited about having a work session this month. <laughs> So um, what we'll probably do is as we get towards the end of this month, send out the draft of that application so people can read the narratives and maybe show some insight to something and say, hey, you know, add this to this paragraph or something. Um, so that when we get to the meeting, um, we can move forward. We can still tweak some of that narrative after that meeting. Yeah, we can. Um, if, I mean, the resolution is already, it's pretty boilerplate for the most part. Um, so we can still make changes kind of through Mm -hmm. January, but it'd be nice to have it mostly buttoned up by early January. Do we need to have a work session for this? I don't really think so. If people are willing to take a look at it, if we send it out to our hands, it's not going to be a huge document to review. I mean, you're not going to want to look at, okay, how did you calculate the cost of this street and those types of things? That's not important. Mm -hmm. um, but read the narratives, and if you have anything to add. So I'm thinking it'll take you a half hour to read through. Something like that. So, do some light reading for you on Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve. Yeah. <laughs> when you want some quiet time. Yeah. When you're done reading to your kids and Santa hasn't showed up yet. Oh. I want a Christmas All right. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you very much. Have a good Christmas. Yeah. Me too. Yeah, I know. Uh, Max, the rest of what I have underneath me is just a series of dates. Um, the next development core meeting is this Wednesday here. Um, that's December 8th at 11 o'clock. Um, we're having a personnel committee meeting uh, 1 o'clock on Thursday afternoon here at City Hall. And next Monday, the 13th at 1 o'clock, um, Mike's having a park and trail board meeting. Just to review end of year, go through maybe next year's hopes and dreams. Um, the next chamber meeting is is at the pond on the fifteenth at noon. It's the reason one of the reasons we kind of coincided the ribbon cutting. Okay, we figured we'd have business leaders there too. So you guys, so the chamber be meeting at noon, and then we're going to do the 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 ribbon cutting at one. one. Yep. I want to make sure I have you know, yeah. yep. the right way on it. Yep. Yeah. Three burgers. And well, you don't, it, it, it's not, it's, your attendance is not required, but it would be nice. They're going to, you know, you tell Well, <laughs> they've true. already notified. I think they're bringing late ones. And, you know, I've notified Jennifer Parker. I know they're notifying the Pioneer. So, um, uh, Tom uh, Tracy Pogue asked if we would do a ribbon cutting outside versus inside. And I said, I think it's going to be weather related, you know, but we'll have some photos. And I don't know, maybe we can convince Melissa to make some free fries that day. I could probably figure something out. Do some kitchen food or something. I don't know. Hey, I could try out our new oven. Maybe I'll make cookies. <sighs> maybe. Oh. Make heavy. Um, <laughs> moving to the Black Tech Planning Commission's regular scheduled Careful, meeting is also, <laughs> is also the 15th at 2 o'clock that day. Um, December 16th at 9.30, the Black Tech Ambulance Board and Joint Powers are having a regular meeting here at City Hall. That's also their truth and taxation public hearing. If anybody's interested in attending. Um, December 24th on Christmas Eve, Black Tech City Hall is closed at noon in, a, in observance of that holiday. That's a Friday. And December 31st is New Year's Eve, but 
because New Year's Day is Saturday, City Hall is closed on Friday. January 10th is your next regular city council meeting. And then I did meet with uh, Steve Rose over the phone last week and his feedback on the bidding date for the Public Works Police Facility from uh, Cross Anderson was that waiting is actually probably not, is not really good just to get it done with because what most construction companies are uh, doing is they are bidding earlier because it's taking so much longer to get materials and um, confirm subs on projects that the construction companies are doing a lot of bidding on a lot of projects earlier anyway. So they, they advised that the city um, stick to that January uh, 20th bid opening date. So um, that'll be here at one o'clock. The advertised dates will be um, December 18th and January 1st. And we'll be putting that in the American as well as the Pioneer. And then we'll also note in the bid language um, that will be available on that um, internet based bidding program that WITSET uses. And that's everything under me, unless anybody has any questions. I was happy to see every single one of you out the park yeah. on Saturday. That was that was great. It was fun. Yeah, that was, was good fun. to see. Kids loved it. One, three, three. So, uh, official thank you to Tony Rossberg for did a good job. Lining all them people up. It was. I think they're fantastic for a first time out. I think they did. I like the Santa in the pavilion for the. Yeah, and the visitor center. Yeah. That worked good. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
want to make that motion? Motion to adjourn. Yeah. I motion to adjourn. Well, we have one in a second, so. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. That's a hard sell. Then it's only a vote no. Four sessions. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a pleasure with all of you. We'll see you next year. Next year.